Bloodlands is a book that explores the devastating impact of World War II on the lands between Germany and Russia. Snyder argues that this region, which he dubs the Bloodlands, was the site of some of the most brutal and destructive events of the 20th century. Chapter 1, Introducing the Bloodlands In the opening chapter of Bloodlands, Timothy Snyder sets the stage for his exploration of the devastating impact of World War II on the lands between Germany and Russia. Snyder argues that this region, which he dubs the Bloodlands, was the site of some of the most brutal and destructive events of the 20th century. He notes that over 14 million people died in the Bloodlands during World War II, making it one of the deadliest regions in human history. Snyder also discusses the importance of examining the events of the Bloodlands in their own right, rather than as a footnote to the larger story of World War II. He argues that the violence and destruction that occurred in this region were not just the result of the war, but rather the culmination of decades of political and social upheaval. Chapter 2, Stalin's Terror Famine In Chapter 2, Snyder explores the Soviet famine of 1933, which he sees as a precursor to the larger-scale atrocities that would follow. He notes that the famine was caused by a combination of natural disasters and the policies of the Soviet government, which requisitioned grain from peasants and refused to provide aid to those in need. Snyder argues that the famine was not just a natural disaster, but rather a political tool used by Stalin to assert his power over the Soviet Union. He notes that millions of people died during the famine, and that the Soviet government actively worked to cover up the extent of the disaster. Chapter 3, Stalin's Terror In Chapter 3, Snyder discusses the purges and show trials of Stalin's regime, which claimed the lives of millions of Soviet citizens. He argues that these events set the stage for the even more catastrophic violence that would come with the German invasion of the Soviet Union. Snyder notes that the purges were not just aimed at political opponents of the Soviet government, but also at ordinary citizens who were accused of crimes they did not commit. He argues that the terror was driven by a desire for control, rather than by any real threat to the Soviet state. Chapter 4, Hitler's Plans for the East In Chapter 4, Snyder discusses Hitler's plans for the East which he sees as a key factor in the violence that would occur in the Bloodlands during World War II. He notes that Hitler saw the Slavic peoples of Eastern Europe as racially inferior, and that he planned to create a new racial order in Europe that would be dominated by the Germans. Snyder argues that Hitler's plans for the East were not just ideological, but also had practical implications for the conduct of the war. He notes that the German invasion of the Soviet Union was not just a military campaign, but also a campaign of mass murder and destruction aimed at creating a new racial order in Europe. Chapter 5, The German-Soviet War Begins In Chapter 5, Snyder discusses the opening stages of the German-Soviet War. He notes that the German invasion was initially very successful, and that the Soviet Union suffered massive losses in the first months of the war. Snyder argues that the violence of the war was not just the result of military necessity, but was also driven by ideological and racial motivations. He notes that the German army engaged in widespread acts of murder and destruction, and that Soviet civilians were often targeted for violence. Chapter 6, The Shoah in the East Chapter 6 is the heart of Snyder's book, as he discusses the Holocaust in Eastern Europe. Snyder argues that the genocide of the Jews in this region was distinct from the Holocaust as it was carried out in Western Europe. In the Bloodlands, the killing of Jews was often done on a mass scale, with entire communities being rounded up and shot. Snyder also notes that the killing of Jews in the Bloodlands was often carried out by local collaborators, who were often motivated by anti-Semitism or a desire to gain favor with the occupying Germans. He argues that this collaboration was an important factor in the scale of the violence in the Bloodlands. Snyder also discusses the broader context of the Holocaust in the Bloodlands, noting that the genocide of the Jews was just one aspect of a larger campaign of destruction and murder that also targeted other groups, including Roma, homosexuals, and disabled people. 
Chapter 7, The Limits of Collaboration In Chapter 7, Snyder explores the limits of collaboration between local populations and the occupying Germans. He notes that while many people in the Bloodlands did collaborate with the Germans, there were also instances of resistance and defiance. Snyder argues that these acts of resistance were often motivated by a desire to protect one's own community, rather than by any abstract commitment to justice or human rights. He notes that the violence of the occupation was often indiscriminate, and that even those who collaborated with the Germans were not immune from the brutality of the war. Chapter 8, The Soviet Response In Chapter 8, Snyder discusses the Soviet response to the German invasion. He notes that the Soviet Union was able to mount a successful defense of its territory, but at a huge cost in human lives. Snyder argues that the Soviet response to the invasion was driven by a combination of patriotism and fear, as the Soviet government portrayed the war as a struggle for survival against the fascist aggressors. He notes that the Soviet government also used the war as an opportunity to consolidate its power, purging those who were seen as disloyal or insufficiently committed to the cause. Chapter 9, The Nazi War of Annihilation In Chapter 9, Snyder explores the Nazi campaign of annihilation in the Bloodlands. He notes that the Germans saw the war in the East as a racial struggle, and that they sought to destroy the Slavic peoples of Eastern Europe in order to create living space for the German people. Snyder argues that the campaign of annihilation was characterized by a ruthless logic, in which any form of resistance was met with brutal violence. He notes that the Germans engaged in mass murder and destruction on a scale that was unprecedented in human history, and that the Bloodlands were the site of some of the worst atrocities of the war. Chapter 10, The Soviet Liberation In Chapter 10, Snyder discusses the Soviet liberation of the Bloodlands. He notes that while the Soviet army was able to drive the Germans out of the region, the victory came at a huge cost in human lives. Snyder argues that the Soviet liberation of the Bloodlands was characterized by a mixture of triumph and tragedy, as the Soviet government used the victory to assert its power over the region and to repress any form of dissent. He notes that the legacy of the war in the Bloodlands was one of trauma and loss, as the region struggled to come to terms with the scale of the violence and destruction that had occurred. Chapter 11, Conclusions In the final chapter of Bloodlands, Snyder reflects on the significance of his study of the region. He notes that the violence and destruction of the Bloodlands were not just a product of the war, but were the result of decades of political and social upheaval. Snyder argues that the study of the Bloodlands is important not just for understanding the past, but also for grappling with the challenges of the present and the future. He notes that the violence and destruction that occurred in the Bloodlands were not the product of a unique set of circumstances, but rather were the result of deep-seated human tendencies towards violence and hatred. In conclusion, Bloodlands is a powerful and sobering study of the violence and destruction that occurred in the Bloodlands during World War II. Snyder's research and analysis offer a compelling account of the ways in which the war affected the people and societies of Eastern Europe and of the profound human cost of the conflict. While Bloodlands is a difficult and often distressing read, it is also an important one. Snyder's study highlights the importance of understanding the complexities of history, and of recognizing the ways in which violence and destruction can shape the course of human events. In today's world, where ethnic and political tensions continue to fuel conflict and violence in many parts of the globe, Snyder's insights into the dangers of hatred and extremism are more relevant than ever. Bloodlands is a valuable and insightful work that deserves to be read and considered by anyone seeking a deeper understanding of the human experience. Moreover, Bloodlands is not just a work of historical analysis, but also a call to action. Snyder argues that the legacy of the violence and destruction of the Bloodlands must be confronted and addressed in order to prevent similar atrocities from occurring in the future. He notes that the violence and destruction in the Bloodlands were not inevitable, but rather were the result of political and social forces that could have been countered and overcome.
by understanding the causes and consequences of the violence in the bloodlands, we can work towards creating a more just and peaceful world. Snyder's study also challenges us to confront the uncomfortable truths of history. He notes that the violence and destruction of the bloodlands were not just the result of the actions of a few evil individuals, but were also the result of broader political and social structures. In particular, Snyder emphasizes the role of nationalism and ethnic identity in shaping the course of events in the bloodlands. He argues that the violence and destruction of the war were driven in part by the desire of different ethnic groups to assert their dominance over others. By acknowledging these uncomfortable truths, Snyder suggests, we can work towards creating a more inclusive and equitable society, one in which different ethnic and national groups can coexist peacefully and respectfully. Overall, Bloodlands is a thought-provoking and impactful work of historical analysis that sheds light on some of the darkest aspects of human history. By examining the violence and destruction of the bloodlands, Snyder challenges us to confront the ways in which human beings are capable of inflicting harm on one another, and to work towards creating a better and more just world. 7 Lessons Learned from Bloodlands by Timothy Snyder The Dangers of Nationalism and Ethnic Identity Snyder's analysis highlights the role of nationalism and ethnic identity in shaping the course of events in the bloodlands, and underscores the dangers of these ideologies in fostering conflict and violence. The importance of understanding history, Bloodlands reminds us of the importance of understanding the complexities of history, and of recognizing the ways in which violence and destruction can shape the course of human events. The Dangers of Political Extremism Snyder's study underscores the dangers of political extremism and the ways in which it can lead to violence and destruction. The need to confront uncomfortable truths, by acknowledging the uncomfortable truths of history, we can work towards creating a more inclusive and equitable society. The importance of human empathy, Bloodlands highlights the importance of empathy and understanding in bridging the divisions that can lead to violence and conflict. The Legacy of Violence and Destruction Snyder argues that the legacy of the violence and destruction in the bloodlands must be confronted and addressed in order to prevent similar atrocities from occurring in the future. The Need for Action By understanding the causes and consequences of the violence in the bloodlands, we can work towards creating a more just and peaceful world. If you want to deepen your understanding of the dark history of the Bloodlands and learn about the lessons we can draw from it, Bloodlands is a must-read. You can purchase it from the link in the description. We encourage you to like and share this book summary with your friends and family, and to subscribe to our channel to get more book summaries in this category. Together. We can continue to learn from the past and work towards a better future.